This is BizTalk Orchestration Basics. What I'm going to be talking about is what an orchestration is, why you might use one, and how you get from zero to having a functioning deployed orchestration in BizTalk server. Uh, what is an orchestration? It is basically, it's a workflow. It's, it's not a great named uh, artifact, I think, in BizTalk. They should, have, they should have called it workflow, although there is another product called workflow which is slightly different. It's a, it's a business process. So instead, uh, you, you, you will have multiple situations in BizTalk where you need to do something else besides simple messaging or, or simple routing or simple transformation. You, you might need to do multiple transformations. You might have to make a decision. You might have to wait on a, on a process to finish. Um, a common one is you might need to receive multiple different types of messages over a long period of time before you kick off a particular business process. And all of those are use cases for using a, an orchestration. So I'm gonna walk through how to create a basic orchestration, deploy it into BizTalk. Uh, so go ahead and launch Visual Studio. I'm using Visual Studio 2012, BizTalk Server 2013. Any type of install that you have is going to work for what I'm going to show you here. I'm not getting into any of the more advanced things that might might be affected by that. And by the way, I'm going to make a few mistakes on purpose so that you can see common mistakes that you you will make uh, making your first orchestration, so you know how to how to correct them. So I'm going to create a new project, and you'll see I've got BizTalk projects over here. You should have that if you've installed your Dev Tools correctly call this orchestration basics okay <clears throat> and here we have our solution um, I'm gonna right click add items and uh, under the your BizTalk items you'll see orchestration right on the top I always call this some sort of some sort of verb is the thing to keep in mind so um, process orders that's a very common thing to do now I've got my um, um, main, this is main way, the main thing you're going to be living in when you're doing orchestrations, you're going to have your toolbox, which should be common to, or familiar to you if you've worked in Visual Studio before, you've got your orchestration surface, and we've got a new view over here called orchestration view, as long, along with your properties. These are, are very important. Um, so um, let's talk about this orchestration view. Uh, up at the top, you have essentially, if you're familiar with C Sharp, everything on the top here are going to be your, your instances. And on the bottom, it's going to be your types. So uh, you have, um, you've, you've got different types of types, if that makes sense. You've got port types, you've got message types, and cor correlation types, and rolling types. You're really going to use this. And less common, you're going to be using this. These two are very important. And I'm going to talk about it for a minute. Um, you're going to basically have to activate your orchestration somehow. So BizTalk server, you, you deploy a bunch of orchestrations in. It has to know how to and which orchestrations start at specific times. And the way it does this is by, by activation. Um, you can activate an orchestration in various ways. I'm going to talk about uh, receiving a message. The way you do that is you define a, a port. A port is a logical channel that um, connects to your orchestration. So right now I'm going to say we're going to be receiving orders. BizTalk orchestration doesn't care how I get that orders message. It could come from a, a file system. It could come from a queue. It could come from a database. It doesn't care as long as the message matches its defined schema. And this is one of the benefits of using BizTalk is that you can, uh, after you deploy your solution and it's in production, suddenly your file location changes. It's easy to change that in BizTalk admin. I'm not getting my orders from a file system anymore. I'm getting it from a queue. It's no problem. You change your adapter type and no programming has to change at all because the orchestration doesn't care about that. It's not tied to a physical location. It is tied to a logical location, which is your, your port. Now you've got two port surfaces here. 
there is no reason for that. It, they're uh, functionally identical. The only only thing is, is there's maybe a convention within the community that the receive shape starts on the left and the um, send shape is on the right. It's not always the way it is, but if you want to stick to that convention, it, it makes things easier for people coming along later. And I guess that's because we probably read from left to right. Okay. So um, the first thing you're going to be doing if you are creating an orchestration that is activated by a message is you're going to create a configured port. I'm going to go through a wizard that kind of takes care of, of most of this for you and then show you in a second the artifacts that the wizard makes. So just go ahead and right click on your, your port surface. You can, by the way, right click or get items from your, your toolbox for whatever reason I always right click. Um, so here we go, new configured port. It's telling, telling me what I'm, what I'm about to do. Uh, it's asking for a port uh, property. So, so basically it's gonna take me through creating two artifacts, a port and a port type. So remember I said that the port type is, is, is like a C-sharp type and then your port is like the instance of that type. So essentially uh, the port type defines what kind of message I'm getting and then the, the port defines the particular instance of uh, that port. So I'll just go ahead and call this, um, let's say this is a receive orders port. Okay, now it's gonna ask me what port type I'm gonna use. So in this case, I'm creating a new one. That's why I'm going through the wizard. Um, remember I said that uh, it's, it's just defining the message type. So I don't need to call it a receive orders because all, all I care about is that, that it's a, an orders. So I'm gonna call this orders port type. <clears throat> this is your communication pattern. I, I could talk at length about this. Basically, um, a lot of transport um, is gonna be, for instance, file system, you're just picking up a file, it's one way. Um, if you've got something like a, a WCF, um, um, web service uh, or SQL call, it's going to be request response because you're sending out a message, for instance, to SQL and you're, you're expecting a response back. You're calling a web service, you're expecting a response back, or you're expecting to be called into and you're going to give a response if you're hosting a web service, for instance. But here, I'm just, I'm just going to expect I'm receiving a simple orders file. So these access restrictions are exactly what they are in C-sharp or .NET. Everything under the covers in BizTalk is .NET. So this, these are at your, your, your access restrictions to, in terms of the assembly. So I'm going to click next. This is just asking, am I going to be receiving a message or sending a message? It's, um, it's self-explanatory and then you've got your port binding now this is important there's three options here specify now specify later or direct um, specify now is basically if you were hard coding your your uh, receive location so for instance if you already knew where in the file system you were picking up a file from or what's your database that you're picking up from and it's always going to be the same you can do specify now that's not really a, a great thing to do because it kind of takes away the power of, of BizTalk where you can change that at runtime later on in BTS admin. There might be some specific use cases where you um, are picking up from mm, different locations, more, more, more like if you're sending to different locations based on some criteria in the message or uh, for instance, you're doing a lookup and you're for email that might be a, a use case for specify now. Specify later, and I'll show you in a few minutes when this is deployed, but you basically select the port in BizTalk admin at runtime that your orchestration will be using to receive its message. And then you've got direct, and this is if you are activating your orchestration based on what's in the message box. So um, for instance, you might have an orchestration where you want every order that is received in the in BizTalk, no matter where it comes from, to activate this orchestration. Um, there's there's other use cases, and, and you, you can set up multiple filters. So uh, I might talk about that in a different post. So I'm just going to specify later. That's, that's 
the main one you're probably going to be using. So it's telling me what it's about to do. I click finish and let's talk about what's changed. First, the first thing you'll see is a, uh, this is the port, uh, receive orders port. And within the port, you've got a port type. So notice on the right, when I select the port, the instance of the port here is selected. When you select the port type, it shows up down here under, under the port types. And the uh, first thing you'll see here is a, it's a little red bang saying there's no message type to find. And that's because the, um, th there is no message type to find. Let's, let's do that right now. So uh, I'm gonna click on the properties windows window and it's asking the message type pull down normally what you do here is you would have a message defined by a schema but I've, I'm not going to go through creating a schema right now for the purposes of this demonstration I'm just going to choose a simple .NET XML type the next thing I'm going to do is create a receive shape so this is how you wire up the port with the actual orchestration here it says receive one let's call this receive orders that's what it does and it's asking for a message type and remember i just defined the um, the port type as being a xml doc um, i'm going to do the same thing here except why, why don't i see anything right here well it's because it's actually asking for an instance of a message let's create a new message here call it XML message. Now I could go ahead and define the XML XML doc type right here if I wanted to. For this demonstration, I'm going to actually create a new multi-part message. Call it XML multi message type MMT. Expand this out and call the define it here. I'm going to have to pull it up right here. So XML documents. Okay. And then I've got my XML message, multi-part message types. I'm going to select my, uh, my message type right there. Now that seems like a kind of a hoop to go through. Why are you going to do that? Well, it's because if, if you get a larger, business process and you've got multiple assemblies, you're probably going to have your core types and your core um, um, port types defined in a single assembly and you've got other people referencing it. So you're going to have your port types use um, multi-message types. And actually, I'm going to do that right here. So that when you're wiring everything up, everything stays consistent. If you end up needing to change your message type later on, you change it in one spot, everything compiles nicely. You don't have to worry about unwiring everything and then wiring it back up once you change all the message types. It's good practice. Just go ahead and use multi-message part types. So um, so we've got we've defined our, our receive port and we've defined our receive shape. I'm gonna wire it up. If it doesn't let you click that together, you've messed up the message definitions here. Okay, so let me go ahead and compile. And it's gonna give me an error. It's, uh, well, there's a couple errors here. Let's take a look what we got. Um, this is actually telling me that I haven't defined my receive shape, or my receive message it's it let me let me wire this up it probably shouldn't have because uh, I because I never defined that so so there you go to find that rebuild it okay you must specify at least one already initialized correlation set for a non activation receive that is on a non self correlating port that is a mouthful and the only thing you need to remember at this point is the uh, this activation part it's just telling me have not defined a activation point. So it doesn't know how to start this orchestration up. But here's my property here on this message, activation. Set that to true, save it, recompile, and it builds successfully. 
Okay, now I'm going to deploy and I'm gonna get a couple of errors here and we'll work through them. Okay, it's telling me that it's not strongly named assembly in order to deploy anything into BizTalk, it has to be strongly named because it is gacking it. So I'm gonna go down here to properties, signing, sign the assembly. I'm just gonna create a real simple key, nothing too fancy. There's my new key, I'm gonna rebuild it, and I'm gonna do deploy it. And it's gonna tell me it failed again. Why did it fail? Okay, access is denied. If you are doing development in Windows Server 2012 like I am, and you probably are gonna be doing an environment like that, you need to have admin access in order to gack something. So. Um, Visual Studio is launched as a user process. R real simple here, you just close Visual Studio, you open it as administrator, gives you UAC. Here I am, I'm gonna open that same project I said a minute ago. And here, here we are when we're running as administrator. So I'm going to deploy it, but wait a minute. Before I do that, let me check on one thing here. See this deployment tab? <clears throat> it needs to know which application it's gonna be deploying into. If you have this blank, what it's going to do is to deploy it into this BizTalk application one. And you don't want that because you're gonna lose track of everything. It's gonna be in, everything's gonna be in BizTalk application one, or you'll think you'll have specified an application and you really haven't, so it gets lost, even though it says it was successfully deployed. So let's just go ahead and name this orchestration basics. I'm just gonna copy and paste that in there. And now I'm going to deploy and everything should deploy successfully. Great, okay. So let's go into BizTalk. This is BTS admin. I've already exploited out my groups and my applications down to this orchestration basics application I just created. Uh, one important thing to know is that when you deploy something into BizTalk and you have BizTalk admin up, it's not gonna show you what was just deployed um, because it's almost like, think about it like as a SQL management studio. It's it's actually only show, showing you what the result of the last query was. So the last query was, um, it was um, before I had deployed. So I'm just gonna right click and say refresh. <clears throat> so now we see the process orders orchestration that I had just deployed in there. And it says that it is unlisted and unbound. The reason it's unbound is because I had earlier had a specify later port, which I'm gonna show you right now. Double click there, click on the bindings tab. And you'll see there's two nuns here. This just wants to know which process, which host it wants to run under. And then it wants to know what receive port I want to run under. I'm gonna go ahead click out of that and show you my receive ports. I've already set up a receive orders port and I've already set up a receive orders location. Um, I'm gonna take a look at this. I've already set up a file receive location. I'm gonna go into that later, how you create those. But for now, I'm just gonna show you how to wire up an orchestration, assuming you know how to do the ports. So here's my logical port. I'm gonna connect this to the physical receive orders port. And now the unbound notification goes away because it knows where, where I've wired everything up. And I can go ahead and start this. And now I've got a orchestration deployed in the BizTalk. It works. Um, it doesn't do anything. All it's going to do is activate when it receives an XML document in that file location, activates the orchestration, and then it dies because I've got nothing out here for it to do but it is stepping st stone to get to any other thing that you might want it to do, which I will talk about later. All right, well, that gets you from zero to having a deployed orchestration in BizTalk. I hope that was informative. If you liked it, check out my website, alethiadevelopment.com. Thanks for watching.